A lot of us in different parts of the country are starting to be able to actually hold services on Sunday again with a few people in the room. So instead of pre-recording services, a lot of churches are starting to pivot and think about what it takes to be actually live online. In this video, we're gonna cover all the stuff you're gonna need to do and purchase in order to be successful live streaming your services on Sundays. Thanks for checking out the Church Video School channel. My name is Spencer. I'm the founder of churchvideoschool.com. I'm here to help you and your church win when it comes to video. If you want some tips on great gear that I recommend, you can go click the link below in the description to the Church Video Gear Guide. It's a free list of everything you might ever need for either broadcast or traditional video setups. It's gonna save you a bunch of time if you're new and feel overwhelmed trying to sort through what to buy and what's a waste of money. So check that out below and don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel to make sure that you see all the content that comes out to help you and your church make great videos. So today we're talking about how to go from pre-recording services to live streaming what's happening in the room in real time. So step number one to having successful live streaming is you need a plan. That may sound really obvious, but I've run into a few churches who want to shoot first and ask questions later when it comes to purchasing gear and making a strategy for being successful live streaming. Before you start investing in hardware or even in personnel and start making promises to your congregation, you should have a conversation with your church leadership to ask the question, how far do we want to take this thing? Do we wanna have three, four cameras with people operating, having a great, interactive live stream experience that's really well produced? Are you more content or more able to do a smaller setup with a few cameras that might not be monitored, might just be set and forget and just turned on, but at least have someone switching angles and at least have a positive live stream experience for those watching? Or are you at the place where you have no idea uh, but you just at least want to have something online. You just want to put a camera up and plug it into your computer and get it on there. No matter where you are, it's important to ask the question, where do we want to be? Because that's really going to affect the decisions you make along the way about what kind of gear you should be prepared to invest in. Step number two for being successful transitioning to live streaming is wrapping your mind around the fact that you are going to have to invest in a broadcast studio setup. What do I mean by that? A lot of us think that pre-recording videos and editing them and putting them together and putting them online is like one or two steps removed from live streaming services. And I'm here to tell you, it's more like 10 or 15 steps removed from live streaming services. What you are going to have to do is take all of the processes and steps from shooting and recording to editing to post-processing to outputting to then uploading and do all those things simultaneously. What you're able to do before with just a camera and a computer and a memory card is now going to require at minimum about four or five pieces of gear that you don't currently have. So while there's definitely levels as far as what your investment's going to be to live stream based on what kind of live stream you wanna do, you need to just wrap your head around the fact that it's going to be an investment. I think it's a worthy investment. I don't think that online church is a fad. I don't think it's a band-aid. I think it's the future. I think a both and model is going to work for almost all churches out there, but you're going to have to be prepared to put a little bit more time, a little bit more money, and even more personnel into live streaming than you probably expected. Step number three, you're gonna need a hardware video switcher. Unless you're running a single camera stream, which I don't recommend, you're going to need a hub to receive all of your video signal coming in and give you the opportunity to cut between your angles. It's been a surprise to a lot of the churches I've been working with lately that you can't simply plug an HDMI cable into your computer. If you didn't know that, now you do. That simple fact that you cannot plug an HDMI going into your computer without buying a special piece of hardware in and of itself is why live streaming is just more complicated because things like this require a bunch of gear you didn't even know existed. So even if you're doing a single camera in, unless you have a special kind of camera that can go over USB, and there are a few, you're going to need some kind of card or dongle that receives an HDMI input signal and converts it so your computer can read. Now, if you have more than one computer and you don't wanna buy four or five or three of these dongles or cards, you wanna get one that has four or five inputs, right? That makes way more sense. So you're gonna to need to prepare to invest in something like that. There are three main options out there for hardware video switching. You have the Blackmagic Design A10 Mini, the A10 Mini Pro, 
and then the Blackmagic Studio HD. So the ATEM Mini is a four HDMI in switcher that has no hardware on it. That means it doesn't do any processing. All it is is really a fancy dongle that just gives you the inputs that you need to have four video signals coming in plus audio so that you can at least plug all your cameras in and start switching. The A10 Mini Pro, which just came out and I think it's already sold out or back ordered, is almost the exact same thing, except it has hardware encoding on it, which means that as those video signals come in, that external unit is actually doing all of the video processing for you, which means that the computer that it's connected to is not having a CPU load on decoding and encoding and switching between all those video streams. If you're a smaller setup and you don't have a bunch of computers to run all your tasks, this might be a really smart investment because it means you're not gonna overload the computer that might be running slides and lighting software and even ProPresenter. Then the last option, the Blackmagic Television Studio HD is a rack mounted switcher. It's a full size switcher module that really is my number one recommendation if you're serious about doing a quality live stream experience. A switcher like the full rack size Blackmagic Studio HD is going to give you eight inputs, four HDMI and four SDI. That is going to give you the latitude to have four or five cameras if you want. Plus you need to think through, do I want my ProPresenter lyrics and full screen graphics on my live stream? Which I think most of us would say, yeah, I do. You're gonna need at least two inputs to run those as a video in and use that Blackmagic switcher as a way to key and layer those things on top of each other. The moral of the story is that no matter what kind of setup you're doing, other than a single camera, just set and forget type of setup, you're going to need to invest in a hardware video switcher. And those are the three I recommend. Step number four is you need to think about how important it is to get your lyrics and your full screen graphics onto your live stream. I think most of us would say that's important to us, that we want our live stream audience to be able to see who's talking, be able to see the announcement slides, be able to see the lyrics on the screen during worship, because I think a lot of us have been doing that when we pre-record, and that's pretty easy. You just drop it on your video when you edit, export, boom, it works. But when we're doing this live and everything's happening simultaneously, it's not quite that simple. I don't wanna get too into the weeds on this because I know that there are a bajillion ways to connect through NDI or SDI or HDMI and alpha channels and upstream downstream keying. And I know that there's a lot of ways to solve this problem. When you set a new output destination in your software, you're going to basically tell the computer this is another place to send a duplicate signal, just like it's another screen in your auditorium or worship center or whatever you call it. The somewhat complicated part is how do I get that signal from the machine running that into my hardware switcher. If you happen to be running PC, I'm gonna tell you right now, you actually have a little bit of an advantage in this scenario. The reasons that a tower PC almost always has what are called PCI slots in the back. Those are open bays in the back of the computer that you can manually open the computer, put a PCI card in there, and now you have some new inputs and outputs or some other kind of functionality you didn't have before. The only Mac that can do that is the new Mac Pro. So if you have a PC, you can buy a PCI card that has SDI or HDMI out, and there's a few linked in the description below, in order to send this signal out to your switcher. And that's about it as far as that process goes. If you're running Mac, it's not that bad, but what you have to do is buy what's called an expansion deck. There's a few linked in the description below. There's different size expansion decks. All of them hold between one and three PCI card slots, and they basically exist next to your computer, and you connect to it through the Thunderbolt port. It's essentially just an external way of installing a PCI card on your machine. And that way you can send your lyrics and slides over the Thunderbolt to that card and then out that card, and the most popular ones, the DeckLink Duo by Blackmagic, and it's gonna have some SDI out going from that into your switcher as a video feed. Then inside your video switcher, you basically treat those as a video feed and you key one on top of the other inside your Blackmagic switcher and that's how you're gonna get your lyrics to lay on top of your video for your stream and you can even route that back into your presentation software depending on what kind of card you have and run that live in the room if you want uh, video on the screens in the room. Step number five, if you wanna be successful setting up your live stream, is that you need a quality broadcast mix. 
Once you've established how you're going to get your video feeds combined and sent to your streaming software, you have to remember that audio is 50% of video. If you're still sending a straight house feed from your mixer into your live stream, if you check that and or listen to it somewhere else, you're gonna notice it doesn't sound very good. When you remove yourself from the acoustics of the room you're mixing in and all the actual stage noise that's coming out, especially for drums, you'll notice that your mix needs a lot of tweaking. If you have a digital mixer, just create a new bus out or even a matrix out, depending on what's easiest for your board. Then create a custom mix that's designed for your audience who's not in the room and doesn't hear any of the acoustic noise. It's going to take some time to get that thing dialed in, but it's gonna be well worth the effort. A really great way to do this quickly is to simulate what people are going to be hearing in the broadcast mix by doing a multi-track recording on Sunday. Then when you play back that recording, you can tweak the levels either in a DAW like Pro Tools or Ableton or feed it back into your digital board and mix it in the house. But what you wanna do is mix it without anyone on stage, like a virtual sound check. This is going to be the best way to let you hear exactly what's going out through your board and nothing else. If you want any tips on getting an awesome broadcast mix, make sure you check out Jake at Churchfront. He's a friend of mine. He has an awesome, awesome course on doing broadcast mixing as well as a template you can buy for Ableton to really take your broadcast mix from okay to awesome. Finally, step number six for preparing to live stream successfully is investing in people. Sorry to disappoint a lot of you out there, but you cannot expect the person who's already running ProPresenter for you to do all your video switching and camera operating for your live stream. At the very least, you're going to need someone dedicated to monitoring your live stream, making sure nothing's going wrong, that the connection is good, and even doing your live chat, as well as making sure that person is switching between camera angles and or operating your main camera. Maybe you just have one and it's right next to them, but that's about all you can ask that person to do. If you have someone else running lights and slides, or if you've automated those things, I think that's great. You can't really expect someone to do all of that stuff by themselves. This really ties into your plan. If your plan involves multiple cameras, that are being operated, that can follow your pastor as he walks across the stage and be close enough to feel engaging, you need to consider the fact that you're gonna need people to run those cameras. You're gonna need basically a producer who's cutting your angles and communicating with the video team and you're gonna need probably one person per camera for that to be realistically done. Now, you do not have to get that involved if you're new at this. You can set a couple of angles that cover most of the stage and only really need to be tweaked maybe between worship and the sermon, but generally they capture everything going on and they don't need to be actively manned. But if you don't have a strong production team going on right now, now's the time to start recruiting. You're going to need a regular rotation of qualified individuals who know how the software works, how cameras work, and how the live stream setup works so that you don't burn people out by asking them to be there every Sunday. And also you have people back there who feel confident and comfortable doing what's necessary for your stream to function. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in, checking this out. Again, if you found anything helpful in this video, please smash that like button, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure you stay up to date on all the content that's coming out to help you and your church be more successful with video production. Again, make sure you check out the church video gear guide in the description below. Thanks again for tuning in. I'll see you guys next time.